everybody. Welcome to Tink welcome to Code Lab on Tinker Live. Uh, my name is Mr. Lockhart. I am the educator support coach at Tinker, which basically means that I help teachers. I'm a former teacher and tech coach myself, and I go by big guy in a bow tie on the Twitter machine. And today I have a very, very special guest um, to help us through this project. Mr. Rizak, how are you, Mr. Rizak? Oh, I am so excited always uh, to be on Code Lab. This is a lot of fun. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, I hope everyone had a great Memorial Day. That's kind of where we're at right now. Um, had a lot of hot dogs, hamburgers, and uh, feel ready to learn. I know the summer's getting ready, so I want to make sure everyone has projects, ideas, things to get them, you know, creative in the next few weeks as the, you know, we're just, we're going to, we're going to need a little help this summer. You know, we may not be able to do all the kinds of activities that we want to do. So hopefully uh, today's project gives, uh, gives our students and teachers a few ideas. And this is a fun one. We're going to do plotting the physics canon game. So the physics canon two player game. That's part of hour of code. Why'd you pick this one, Mr. Rizak? Um, honestly, it uses a couple of things that I really like. Uh, one is I love physics, and um, I like to always introduce students to the physics blocks. And so this is a great starter project for students who want to try doing physics. Uh, and um, also, it does use messaging a little bit as well. And I just love messaging blocks. I like the the control it gives students so that they can build stories, and and uh, um, it creates a lot of efficiencies with uh, with your projects. So this should be good, this should be fun. Absolutely, and so kind of today what we're gonna do, we're gonna build the project together. And then I think we both probably have some ways to customize that out. And as we get started with the project, don't ever forget that we always have a chat that is live to a Tinker, a uh, chat on Palette. The chat is moderated teachers. So we see the comments before they come in and students don't forget if you're on that chat, don't, don't use your names there. We can't post those if they uh, have names on them, but definitely there. But uh, are you ready to get started? I'm so ready. Let's get ready. You always like the cheer here, the let's get started cheer. Well, we're going to flip over to the let's get started movie, and here we go. Let's get started. So your first step is you want to go to tinker.com. And if you don't have an account, you want to click start for free over here and create an account for yourself. If you do have an account or if you have an existing Google or Microsoft credential, you can just click right, over, right above my head and click sign in. And once you click that button, you're, it's gonna take you to here. If you're a student, you're gonna sign in over here. If you're a teacher, you're gonna sign in up above. Now the hour of code, that's today's project. It's an hour of code project. There's a couple of different ways to get there. So the way number one is for teachers. And so if you're a teacher, what you can do is you can actually click the resources page that's over here. And then if you notice over there, there is an hour of code uh, like tile. Click that tile, it'll take you right to the hour of code page to find this project. You can also, teachers and students can also go to their classes to find this project. So the hour of code, it uh, auto assigns in student classes. So students can just click on their My Classes tab, get right into the hour of code and start working on this project. Or as a teacher, you can click the, well, that way, you can click this hour of code card right here, click that manage lessons button, and you're gonna, it's gonna take you right to the hour of code page to work on this project with us. And then the last place you can go is probably the easiest one. You can go to the Tinker Hour of Code landing page. And so that's where we are right now. And that URL is tinker.com slash hour of code. Just go to that URL and our guest will tell you where this project is um, in the Hour of Code page. All right, Mr. Rizak, you ready to share your screen? All right, I will let you go ahead and share. You ready? All right, so you we see your screen bright and clear. I'm gonna mute my mic for that while you kind of go through the project. I, it's one of those work from home, my middle school girls, it feels like they're doing a workout upstairs and it feels like hooves stomping on the floor above me, so. That's wonderful. That's <laughs> yeah, so it. I'm gonna I mute my like mic because I know that mic might pick that up. So I'm gonna mute my mic while you share and then I'll come back and share some customizations. No problem. I fully expect my dog to bark in the next five minutes too because 
when you're live, that's what happens. <laughs> um, so uh, I, I hope you know people saw how to get to the project. Uh, that is one thing I don't really show you, but it is in the Hour of Code projects in either your students folder or on the Hour of Code page. Um, if you want me to show you the final step for that, I can. But uh, I will. That's I'll totally know. up to you. Totally up to you yeah, whether so you want to show that final step. A couple of places to look for that. Uh, if you're in your student, if you're in your classes, uh, you can find it inside your lessons page. Uh, if you have a class, hopefully, uh, and you can find it in your lessons right there. There's an hour of code and you can find the physics canon, canon game there or just go to tinker.com slash hour of code. Uh, and uh, that's another way to just get there. But just do make sure, sure you're signed in. Uh, that is one of those things that um, uh, often when you go to the, the hour of code page, you see here, I don't look like I'm signed in, but I want you guys to be able to save your content. So. Um, so I'm just going to search for Canon because that's the way I like to do it. And I can find it right down here. I can start there. Uh, and so that's where I will start. So I'm here in my physics Canon game. And this one actually has a really nice example. So you can click on the sample to see a, a project here to see what this might look when you're all done with it. Uh, but again, you get to use the physics engine. Uh, you're broadcasting and receiving, which uh, again, great uh, skill here. Uh, and then setting the physics uh, settings, we can manipulate those a little bit. Uh, and then um, programming your projectile, whatever you want to call that. Uh, and so hopefully I made my, my, my blocks big enough here so that everyone can see that. I'm going to walk you through the first two steps here, or the first few steps. And then we're going to go back, pause, and then I'll show you some customizations that you can do here. So first we're going to do, we're going to make the cannon active. And to do that, uh, you see I'm on the left cannon. This is the one we're really going to program first. Uh, we're going to set that um, uh, inactive, right? So when you start, it's totally inactive in, in very much a way when you would start a storytelling uh, um, project where you might want to set your actors to hide, right? They're not going to be on screen. You want to set your cannon to inactive. Now we can build the code for what happens when that cannon gets clicked. And so what we're going to do here is we want to create a function where when we hold our mouse down, um, it's going to be uh, active. And then when we release it, it's going, to, uh, it's going to do something extraordinary. So here's what we're going to do. And I'll show you. I'll, I'll, I'll uh, pause uh, throughout so you can see how this code looks. So when the mouse, mouse button is released, the cannon should send a message to the cannon ball. So this is what we're going to want our code to look like right here, nope, like that, right? And so we can look down here just to uh, see. Uh, and we can also test that uh, code as well. So we're going to run it just to test. So here, if I click on my cannon, you can see that it points and it's, it's going to send a message to uh, the cannonball, right? That's what we want. So let's hit a stop on that and uh, get to the next step. So now we need to play with the physics of this a little bit. So we just told the cannon to send a message to the ball. And now we're telling the ball to what's going to happen when it received that, receives that message. So again, this is really uh, a, an efficient way to use your code. And by the way, I am, I've got my code. If, for those of you that don't know this, you can make your blocks really big. Uh, and I do like to make them bigger here so you can see. And then I can just move up uh, and add some space here and move this whole space around. So what's going to happen when he receives this message of shoot left? Uh, we're going to start by setting active uh, to false. So false does not mean true, meaning it's not active, right? It's like a, it's like a neg double negative there. Uh, we're going to go to the left cannon, and we are going to point towards the mouse pointer. Uh, and we are going to then tell it to be active. Uh, and then we're going to uh, first just set our velocity to 25. Uh, so again, we're going to take a look. And it does explain here, which is really nice, what happens when you set active to vols, it prevents the ball from knocking anything over while returning to the cannon. All right, that's good. And then as you move the left cannon and point towards the mouse, uh, um, uh, that's what we're going to do. We want that to happen. And then we're going to react reactivate the ball's physics and launch the ball by giving it velocity. So I'm just going to test this out again. Let's hit play. So a little bit more code has been added here. 
what should happen when I release? Bam. That's pretty cool, right? I like that. Um, so again, we're trying to do is we want the ball to come back to the cannon. So when it does that, we have to tell it to be inactive. And so I could do the same thing again and it'll shoot again. Uh, if, if it was active while it went back to the cannon, it would knock stuff over and we don't want that. So, uh, so that's a good uh, uh, first two steps to, uh, to start with. Uh, and now we're gonna get into kind of like the platforms, right? You can create, you have all these platforms here uh, and you've got these little uh, you know, rectangles here uh, and the grass rec, uh, platforms and these barrels. So these are just, these next couple of steps just kind of tell you how these um, platforms are set to active and what they should basically do. Uh, and it explains a little bit more about being an active uh, platform uh, so these are going to use these two blocks. We're going to set a platform to active and set the shape to rectangular. Uh, and then uh, you can, you know, we can stack other things too. Uh, Non-moving actors are set as static. So if you guys know, if you've done your little terminology, uh, uh, your coding terminology, static, something that doesn't move is static. It's going to stay there. And we want to set some actors to, uh, to be static so that they don't move. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and just play a little around with this a little bit. Uh, there's not a lot more right now in these instructions other than uh, here's some things that you can do. So if you look at your platforms, you can see this was set active. The set was, uh, we set the shape to rectangular. And uh, when we hit play, now we can move that around a little bit. And we're going to have some fun here. Uh, I notice I, right now in its current state, my right Canon is uh, not really coded, so I could probably spend some time on that. But my left Canon is kind of ready to go. Uh, but here's where I'm kind of ready to start making some, you know, maybe some uh, modifications to make this my own, so to speak. So, David, did you have any thoughts on uh, the Canon game? So I've been doing it a little on uh, with you. I think it's a great game because I think it's one of those that you can customize a whole, whole bunch because I'm looking at can I, what can I change as far as the drawings, the graphics, the um, even to a point that the when I brought it up originally, the fruit is different on mine. I have a pear um, on mine. I, I, I'm not sure why that happened, but uh Definitely, and customize it's, it at some point. Yeah, yeah, so there's some there's some really great kind of ways you can customize this out and kind of have that game um, there. And then it's a matter of getting a friend and being able to play it together. So if you want to see some kind of fun stuff, I I can make uh, I can make some customizations here uh, that I think are just fun. I mean, I, I have a little experience with Tinker, so um, I have amassed a few things in my media library that can make this a little bit interesting. Uh, but one of the things um, I want to start with is just I need more platforms. So there's a kind of you know quick and easy way to make more platforms, and I could uh, like go to this grass platform uh, and just make a duplicate. So in a lot of ways, you're going to cut corners because uh, you want to be efficient with Tinker. You don't have to start from scratch. Uh, so in this case, I'm going to go to my three dots and just duplicate that grass platform. Uh, and this one's called Grass Platform 11. That's fine. Uh, but let's say I wanted to build my own, uh, you know, uh, um, platform here. I wanted to do a little customization and make this a little more creative. This is where I'm going to hit my gear button and I'm going to add a costume. Uh, and when I add a costume, uh, and again, I think this is like the quickest, easier way to do this. Let's copy the, let's copy the actor. Let's customize the costume. The code is already there, so we don't have to, uh, you know, do a whole lot there. Uh, but now I can look through here. I can look for, you know, game elements uh, to add. You can see that there's already some interesting type of uh, things here that I could maybe use for. Uh, here's a um, here's a question for you. Can you get sure. really crazy and have a peep have a person be the platform or an animal? <laughs> uh, yeah, you could. Right. Uh, you could have, uh, you know, a cat if you want uh, anything you like. Right. You pick what you like. And so if I choose this cat to be my platform, um, I just need to make sure, like here it is, right? Um, we can put that over here, make him a little bigger. And now he's got physics, right? This cat is set active, he's static, uh, he's active, and 
I think I set his shape to rectangular. I might be able to make that circular. You know, maybe that maybe that works better. Maybe it is kind of rectangular. I don't know. What do you think? Um, so let's test that. And in fact, you know, let's um, let's move that guy around. In fact, I think that guy is a he's set as a rectangular um, platform too. But let's do that. Hit the uh, play button here, and let's launch. Uh oh. Uh oh. So that didn't work. Um, let me try. I thought that one of the interesting ones, though, was because the little monkey is still has the same code. He falls out as soon as he you move him. Uh, yeah, right. So actually, here's a better idea. Let me take that guy, copy that over to my new platform. Um, and this one's got a costume. So when you hit it, it'll change, right? Or it'll, uh, uh, I'm not going to do that one. So let's go back here. This is my monkey, active and rectangular. All right, so I, that one's actually the the platform, the green platform. I did this wrong. Actually, is set to static, so we don't want that, right? We want it set to active. Uh, so let's hit play, and let's shoot my cat. I do. You got to shoot the cat first. I'm working on it. Oh, he doesn't want to move. I set him to true. I set him to right. He's, so he's active. So why isn't my cat moving? Set him to true. Set him to rectangular. Unless there's some code hiding in here. Sometimes that likes to happen. Um, just checking. Maybe that'll work. I don't think that's going to do it, but hey, you know, let's try it. See what happens. This wasn't my customization. Oh, that's fun. I think, <laughs> but I think, but I think that's part of it is that you sometimes you just got to go in there and try, and you got to go and play with blocks and use that help section and figure out the blocks that are going to go and do stuff, especially when you're doing kind of like this game is really, and that's why I think it's labeled as more advanced, is because it's a lot of reactions. It's a lot of like when this thing touches this thing, what happens? Right. So actually, this is a, one of my one of my customizations. This is not actually the one I really wanted to show. Uh, one well, of the ones then I show I, the one you really wanted to show. I didn't mean to get you off track. <laughs> oh no problem. Um, but that's no no problem. So uh, right now, uh, if I wanted to change, let's say, what my projectile looks like, um, I can go over here to my my uh, gear and add a new costume. Now there's an angry bird guy in there too, which that makes kind of sense. You could change it to an angry bird. And uh, you know, when you hit play now, I can shoot angry birds, which is kind of cool. Uh, so you go away, cat, you come back, monkey. And one of the things I wanted to do here was actually add a costume, but I want to show you if I go to, let's say, um, I want to draw something. I could draw something, uh, or I could upload a file uh, if I wanted to. But I also have like tons of things that I've already created. So you can see here, uh, one thing. One of the nice things that Tinker does is it actually uh, shows you if you go to like uh, draw, it'll show you all of your drawings. So I may not need to draw something new. I could use some of the drawings that I've already made and turn these into projectiles. I got lots of fish. I used to love making fish. So they're easy to make, they're quick to draw. Uh, but there's a good one in here that's kind of fun. Wow, so many fish. Um, I have some pictures of my face, some pictures of my head, that kind of stuff. I got Superman uh, in there, but let's put in- You're really good at drawing fish. There's plenty of them. Am, and you get, then, of then you can tell you got tired and you went to dinosaurs and people and spiders. It's true, it is very true. <laughs> And I started like cutting out my head a lot, um, but I think I have a, a head. There we go. So here's my head. Uh, I'm gonna use my head as a projectile. Uh, so let me go to big screen here so you can see that. Hit press play, and I'm gonna go. Oh, there you go. The mon the the monkey likes to. Uh, there we go. So now my head is a projectile. So so we can have some fun with this. Although it makes no sense to me why this monkey and this 
um, uh, cat aren't working. Uh, why the cat's not working? Because it's got the same code as the monkey. But uh, here we'll hit play and we'll start knocking stuff down. So we can have some fun with that. Uh, but yeah, now I can actually you know, go in and we can customize the, the physics of everything, right? So uh, we can go in and we can play with, let's say the projectile velocity, right? The ball, we can set the velocity to, uh, what happens when we set the velocity to 50 and uh, the density to 40? Uh, now we can you know, have some fun with that uh, and see and test our physics, very much like an experiment. Uh, if I set the, you know, the physics here, the linear velocity to 50 on, the, uh, on my head, you know, what's gonna happen? This is oh, the type man. of stuff I wish I had when I was learning physics, where it's yeah. hands-on and uh, really you get to see really what's going on there. Wow, that cat, that monkey went flying off the right. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Uh, <laughs> he went so, way off to the right. Like you could see that the velocity of the in the projectile made that a little uh, more intense. Yeah. This is actually a way to do some modeling, right? So if I had wanted to create an experiment, I could create three projects or I could create three versions with different sets of physics. And I could, you know, if I'm really, you know, going crazy here with science, I could do some modeling where I could say, well, what, what would, what, you know, what would happen if, you know, this projectile was at 75 and this one was at 20 and, you know, and let's pretend this is the real world. Uh, what would happen in these three different scenarios? Uh, and then maybe we try to recreate that in the real world, or we just kind of use that data um, for, you know, uh, for our modeling purposes. And uh, so there's a lot you can do with, with something like this with, uh, with physics. So, so yeah. Absolutely. I wonder eventually too, if it's, you gotta do, I don't know that we have enough time to go into that work where you add, you can definitely go in and add a score every time your uh, projectile hits something. So add like a scorekeeper as well. Yeah, somewhere in my backpack, I have a scorekeeper already. Uh, I have to dig, but I could probably bring that in and manipulate it a little bit. Uh, I know that I've made one in a different game. And again, you don't have to redo or, you know, uh, uh, remake the wheel if you've already made something, but you're probably gonna have to update the code. Yep. I think that's a scorekeeper. That might be a looks like a box, but it might be a might be a score. Um, yeah, it says lives. So I have to take a look at this code and see uh, what that uh, how to fit that in. But yeah, I could definitely uh, um, add a score in there. Awesome. You bet. Well, yeah, it doesn't look like there's questions in the chat. I'm looking at it right now. Although our friend, our friend Donna from Tennessee said she's going to, she was trying to watch along, but she's going to come back and rewatch, which is awesome. Oh, no worries. So flipping over to that question slide, you can see the chat there instead, but I think it's time to kind of wrap up a little bit. Not that slide. We're going to come over here to the next show and the next show is actually tomorrow at 2 p.m. Um, what is on the next show? I, I have not taken a look. Do you know what project we're doing tomorrow? Do you remember? I do. I do know what tomorrow is. I can tell you in two seconds. Tomorrow is May the 27th. It's also my 20th anniversary, believe it or not. Uh, oh, wow. And it will be, uh, we are we are doing spin draw. It's called synthesizing spin draw. And our friend, Mr. Alprandi will be back awesome. uh, to walk us through spin draw. We actually have a really good week. We have two blue ribbons uh, uh, on this week. Uh, so uh, stay tuned for Thursday and Friday as well. Yeah, yeah, I think it'll be a fun week. Um, I think there's some really good stuff going on. And so let's say our thank yous. If you want to stop sharing your screen so we can actually see you. Oh, sure. <laughs> uh, there you are. Um, but we want to say our thank yous, and here comes the outro video. See you tomorrow. Bye. Bye.